Okay, I, uh, you know, I decided to formalize some of these ideas, uh, instead of half-assing it, I, uh, full-assed it, uh, you know, and I'm, and I'm a professional winja sneer, so I could have done, uh, some CAD sorcery, and, uh, you wouldn't have understood any of it, but it would have been pretty, um, so I decided to put my writing skills to use, uh, you know, these days, uh, I do so little of it, I can just about write my name, um, so I, you know, here, here's proof of the pudding, I had to go find the box of pre-sharpened pencils for another pencil because I don't know where a pencil sharpener is. Uh, the other day I donated a whole box of office supplies, pens and pencils from my uh, home office uh, right to the to the Goodwill for uh, for the school chillings because uh, I wasn't using them. Of course, then I immediately thought maybe I should uh, maybe I should remember how to write. Um, so let me show you a dirty trick. I didn't uh, didn't have a good way to draw this to scale. Uh, so maybe we can see this. I took my straight edge and I took the tape measure and I went every five millimeters and I made a tick. Uh, then I went back and I numbered every tick. One up to thirty-six because I figured that's uh, if that was the maximum length of my table. That's as many ticks as I needed. So now one inch is going to be drawn on five millimeters. So I used my ticks to mark out the dimensions. Uh, this uh, straight edge is not actually square, so I can't use it for that. I just squared off the lines on the paper and laser eyeballed it. Uh, so, um, so yeah, I used my, uh, used my straight edge, got the dimensions, uh, to scale with my new scaler. Um, and then I, uh, went and found one, uh, you know, you'll, you'll see these at your, uh, Horror Fright Grandpa's old, uh, compass, what with no pencil, um, so, uh, this is uh, a mighty uh, trick of dexterity, but I, I held one end down with my fingers and I held the pencil to the other end and did this. Uh, so this is my potential vice mounting. Uh, the base was about 8 inches by 8 inches and the holes were mm, something about, about, about like that. Uh, and uh, this is the center of the vice. I went and I fully extended the vice measured from the end of the vice handle all the way to the center of the vice as about 13 inches fully extended and I used my compass made my you know 13 inch 13 inch tick marks just for sanity and then totally missed them uh, but but I set this guy to 13 inches off of my scale held the pencil up um, so this is the maximum now now you don't work with a fully open vice unless you got something that's exactly that size and you can hammer it in there so you get some clamping you got to be able to clamp it so you can't so put something the full size in the vice uh, not gonna happen but in theory my vice will never take up more than this much space that keeps it outside of the range of my firebox by um, let's see uh, shortest distance between two points, about, uh, about three and a half inches. You like that? It's inches now. And in this, on this, is inches in real life. So three and a half inches, full extension. 99% of the time, it's going to be way, way away from that. Um, and this little uh, trick right here, if I bring my vice out at just about that angle, it's almost perfect. It's maybe a little bit less where I can clamp the vise this way or maybe the other way so the crank handles off the table to make a little life a little easier but I'll be able to clamp something and then the center of the vise jaws to the center of my fire pot it'd be about you know 20 depends on depends on how long my item is so how extended the vise is but Let's say 24 inches thereabouts. I mean, if I if my vice is way out here and the center of the object is out there, it's 26 inches. If I sit something directly on the center of the vice, I can't clamp it, but it would be 24 inches. So, no more than 26 inches or so before I run out of vice. Um, you know, I do have a slightly bigger vice, but it's not a, it's not as nice as the one I would like to use here. The one that I want to use, one that has a, a adjustable angle and uh, pipe clamping jaws so that will give me the ability to clamp bar stock or thereabouts tilt it so get it out 90 degrees and tilt it without having to tilt it in the jaws I can clamp it square in the jaws and tilt the jaws for a, a solid hold and I figure that one might actually be more useful when I'm uh, you know doing smithing stuff um, 
So, uh, yeah, that didn't, uh, didn't give me any room for any sort of anvil. Now, the vise has a anvil on the back, and it's actually pretty good. I just, I don't want to, I don't want to put my vise through this level of abuse of hot metal and hammering. Now, I do have, uh, and I mean, it's not an expensive vise, a flea market, you know, whatever. Um, I do have a vise that I care even less about, but it doesn't have the nice swivels. It doesn't have the pipe jaws. It's much, much larger, much, much good for, for hammering on, for bending heavy things. Big stonking vise. However, it's less useful. So I want to put the useful vise here. I'll save the big stonking vise on the workbench for hammering. And, uh, you know, uh, people say a lot of things about anvils. Uh, for 99% of the time, you know, and I occasionally break out the plumber's torch, but most of my home shop repairs involve using the vise as an anvil with a four-pound hammer and no heat. Uh, so this will blow that situation away. It'll be, you know, orders of magnitude better to heat the metal with some real heat, not the plumber's torch, although I've melted aluminum with a plumber's torch. The trick is use two of them <laughs> across the streams. Uh... Yeah, so um, so just to more formalize, I'm gonna I'm gonna think a bit about a height of the tabletop. That's really kind of secondary, but I gotta look at my two year, my ash dump, my my bucket plan. You know, if I'm gonna have, do I want some kind of diagonal bracing, or can I have the nice shelf I would like at the bottom? Which still hoping. Um, no ledge planned here. If absolutely necessary, I'll do something that doesn't interfere with the side openings of this guy. Um, my plan also is to let it drop through the table and bolt it together to its, its own pieces, but not attach it to the table in any way. You know, it's cracked, it's old. These things, everything in life, everything in life has a limited lifespan. You know, you or a rock, you know, or a hunk of cast iron, it, it's all, it's all going to end one day. So, um... So plan for that, I'm going to, you know, this is not necessarily a standard size. Uh, worst case scenario, if I can't find another thing that drops in the same hole, I'll make one. Uh, more than likely, I think I'll just uh, throw some refractory cement or something. If i got to patch this one, I may try to weld it. I may just cover, cover it with cement and call it good. Um, but, uh, yeah, just going to be a drop-through, bolt the other thing from the bottom end, because uh, I think with its various appendages, it may or may not drop through uh, without some gymnastics. Now, with no hoses or anything attached, no extension tubes, might might be okay. Um, I mean, I'm assuming it was meant to do that if the foundry that made it was smart, you know, and they seem like pretty smart guys. They got some, I got some pretty trick swag on that, uh, the deal where I acquired this and a whole bunch of other uh, uh, junk. Uh, so uh, that's uh, coming. If you're on my Instagram, you might have seen some pictures uh, at just the other Dave. Um, but uh, yeah, there's so so there's some cool stuff that's gonna come along with this. I just didn't want to flash my cash up front, you know. Uh, what would the heaping pile of junk I got to go through to assemble a working forge? We'll get to the goodies later. All right, I went and did some uh, stinking, some skulking about in the garage with the tape measure. Uh, one important thing I don't want to gloss over, I, I remembered it earlier and forgot it now. Um, the bolt holes to attach our, uh, our two-year, our ash gate device uh, are oriented longitudinally a long ways. So we've got two bolt holes. So if I put this guy in this way, that ash gate has to bolt up there. Now, it opens to one side or the other. So it can go towards the center of the table or it can go out. Uh, from the hole alignment, which happens across the center of the vertical tube, um, was, what am I doing with the tape measure? The hole alignment, this line, to the end of the tube on the blower inlet side, the part that sticks out, that's the important bit, the part that sticks out. Uh, ladies, you know what I'm talking about. Um, that was eight and three quarters inches, which puts it about like that. So 
hey, that's, you know, I don't, it doesn't stick out, which is kind of nice. It's not going to get like super in the way with this uh, design. You know, it's almost like they intended it to be at the end of a table like this. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to say they intended it cause I'm not that lucky. There must've been some guy smart, smarter than I was, uh, about a hundred years ago. So, uh, so yeah, um, now I got to go look at the vertical height. Now I built a few, I built a few tables in my day. Um, and that depends on how tall you are. You know, I'm a, I'm a knuckle dragger. So, uh, I like about 30 inch, 30 inch table height is about the magic number. Now, my my actual knuckle height off the ground is is lower than that, you know, knuckle dragger. But uh, you know, you wanna you wanna be in this uh, when you're working with your hands. You wanna be in a kind of relaxed position. You stay low. You don't raise your arms up. You you conserve energy for uh, you know, for a short period of time. It may be nice to have something you can see and work on and get into and have leverage, but you'll tire yourself out if you wanna be doing something. And this is a very physical activity. You wanna keep you know, low, relaxed, extended. Um, so again, depends on how tall you are, or how long your arms are, the way to do it, be to measure, you know, somewhere from the ground to your knuckles when your arms are straight down or to your wrist thereabouts. I'm going to, I'm going to split the difference between up here and, and way down low. I'm not hammering directly on this thing. And now I will go and consult what some of the other, uh, forge manufacturers, uh, say, as elitist as they may be, they might know a thing. So, uh, but uh, all, I've looked at several other tables I've made, 30 and a half inches, 32 inches. I had a, a fairly tall one, which was nice for like small projects. It's nice for standing up doing, you know, electronics soldering or something, but like small, small stuff and you gotta be standing for it. Um, if I had to do it again, you know, if I, if I could pick one table height, the 30 and a half, the 30 inch is probably the, the go-to. So again, so it's, 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 this has got a purpose for it. And then I, I, you know, I can optimize for that. But if I'm only going to build one ever, it's going to be something that's comfortable. Um, and that tall table, I'm probably going to dismantle. So tells you something right there. Trying to figure out how to do a fancy time lapse, but one of these uh, Android devices apparently doesn't know how to do that. Uh, so you win this round, iPhoneers. Uh, also, forever uh, now you will be called the iPhoneers. Um, so I am interpolating some of my dimensions, which uh, that line about right there. Just uh, doing this old school. I need another drawing view. I'm coming down, I'm just matching these aligned down to here, uh, da -da, about like this. I'm going to have to draw in some new dimensions in a second, which I've now forgotten since I was talking. So I'll go look at that again, do a little cheating off screen. Oh, time warp. Um, you know, uh, one trick I find, that's more of my uh, drawing we were just working on, one trick I find to drawing things square if you uh, if you can, step one, transfer a reference you already have. So I came up here and I said, well, I just want a vertical line in the frame that I can eyeball. There was no vertical line close enough to this guy to measure off of. So first I came to the edge of my paper, got this flush and made a mark. That's this little ghost mark that I'm gonna erase now. So I took this little ghost mark, then now that it's in the in the eyeball distance, I I said, all right, I'm just going to shift this up to line up with a measurement that was my center point, transferred by some other measurements. Don't worry about it. Uh, got my center point, and I just said, okay, make make this square, same dis this edge, same distance from that edge, using this as my reference. Your your eyeballs are surprisingly accurate. So I use that to shift a known vertical to a known vertical to a eyeball, pretty really good vertical. Um, the other trick I do for drawing this line, um, since I had this based on, you know, I chose a nice square straight line to, to start with, and this didn't fall quite on a line when I was down at the right measurement. So what I did then, same trick, I got a vertical, came down the distance I wanted, put a mark. 
did it a second time over here, came down the distance I wanted and gave it a mark. Now, the marks weren't exactly the corners. I didn't know where the corners would be yet, um, so I erased them, but put those marks wherever. Now you got two marks at the same distance from a line. You know that line is good. Therefore, as long as your measuring was square to begin with and you had, you know, references to do that that you just invented and then erased, you know that these two points at the same distance from this line, ergo, a straight line between them is parallel to this line. So that's how I got to the bottom. Now, I don't need this center all that much. Uh, it was just to get, uh, I used the midpoint. Once I had a line here for reference, which was copied from here, I used the midpoint to measure off of. So I took all my dimensions and divided by two to measure off the midpoint, uh, just convenience, because I didn't know where this well, I knew where this point was, but I didn't know where this point was going to be, and I went and back and measured. Now, so my, uh, my fire pot, uh, we said this was 12 inches on the outside, but on the, the bottom, the mating surface, that's only uh, it's about 9.5. So, well, let's not start cluttering it up with poorly drawn reference lines. Um, too late. So uh, my vertical height for all you copycat forge makers who were fetishizing over this was four inches. Now this is bottom mating face to bottom mating face. The grill does some other kind of number. It actually sticks out down into the two year. So this is the face that I'm bolting to. The bolts, the bolt holes of both pieces contact four inches down. The interior dimension, because this thing has a thickness is less than that, but this also has a thickness, so maybe it cancels out if this is the same thickness as that. About four inches, about nine and a half, and this bottom face was six and a half. So how do, uh, how our casting guys arrived at this arrangement? You know, I, I think they, they started with the angle they wanted, and maybe they, uh, you know the draft angle for the for the casting process, and maybe then they came back and and just picked round numbers off of their rulers. Uh, safe uh, safe guess that this big hunk of cast iron was made in America, because I'm in America, and uh, you know that's an expensive part to ship. And so, frankly, the economics, you know, to someone in the UK, it's it's absolute junk. Someone in Australia, heck no, they're not going to spend the kind of money to get one when they could make it themselves or, or get a you know a locally made equivalent for much less than the cost of shipping. Uh, something always to consider uh, when you look at the world around you. Any of your heavy equipment, I bet you most of the price tied up in it, especially if it was acquired third hand, is in shipping from one guy to the next. So. This is uh, going to be our, our side view of our table. We're, we're working from, so now we'll have a, a reference. So I got to go figure out the two year uh, height, the side pipe, make sure I'm going to have enough room here to be able to put my shelf or, or to have my, you know, there's a compromise. Do I have a shelf? Do I have the, the surface at the height I want it? Which of these can I do? Maybe I put a shelf only on one half and I leave this open, you know. Uh, I would really like a way to collect ashes so if I'm running this out on the driveway, which is the most likely scenario, is a nice smooth surface. I can put it in the garage, roll it out, roll it in. Don't have to fight the grass, don't have to fight the screen door on the porch. You know, just practical reasons say that I would like a bucket, you know. And then, were I ever to go totally nutso and roll this up into a van or truck or something to, to do blacksmithing demos, even though I've got a better paying job, you know, uh, and I'm not to say that I wouldn't enjoy doing such a thing, maybe for educational purposes or maybe because I don't like my job anymore. Uh, we'll, we'll find out, you know, in, uh, five or 10 or 50 years, um, that, uh, it would be nice to be able to roll this up uh, self-contained. Like, you know, I said, i got to figure out my tool holding situation, so I probably don't want to put them under the vise. So this area, this area, keep it out of the swing of the vise. Um, keep it out of the flames if I start dropping screwdrivers with plastic handles and wrench, you know, wrenches. Well, not wrenches, but hammers with wood handles, you know. What uh, can't put in here, don't want to obstruct here, so i got some kind of space here and here. 
for tools underneath the uh, potentially charcoal, potentially metal supplies. Uh, I may need several shelves for that. I've already got other areas of the shop where I'm just heaping the things. Uh, my big old welding table has a shelf underneath with heaped with angle iron, but might not be a lot of that left after I build this thing. So we'll find out. Uh, yep, so off to steal more measurements and uh, pretend that I didn't do a switcheroo on you. I'll try to do this next bit live and uh, screw it up so you can watch. Um, so I'm going to show you some of the, the drawing tricks I want to try. So I know my two-year just went and looked at it. He is 10 inches tall, nice and even. Take that, matricians. We have the number 10, too. Uh, so lining up with my ghost mark now erased that I wish I hadn't. Um, and I'm going to give myself a little bit of offset so I can actually get the pencil in there to keep it in, in line with this mark because I can't get my blunted pencil down in the sharp corner. And I'll go down to my 10-inch scale model. Uh, 6, 8, can't read, 9, 10. Jeez, did I do it that bad? Oh, that's because I numbered every dash mark on that section and the rest of them I numbered only every other one. derp -a -der. Okay, so six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's my ten inch reference. Now, I just screwed that up. You didn't see that. Uh, I gotta come ten inches. This ten inches tall, it's ten inches off of the mounting surface. So, yeah, the important consideration to think about is where is your mounting surface. So, back to my vertical plumb reference. Now I want to come down four, then ten. So I want to come down to 12, 14, if you can't read it, I can't either, so we're all in the same boat together, fellas. That's almost this line down here, or real close to it. Who knows how accurate my plotting is. It doesn't matter so long as it's roughly there, you know, or scaling such a big item down to so small, you know, a quarter of an inch is like the width of the pencil, so about like that. R of ours. Okay, so our two years is ten inches tall. Now there's gonna be there's gonna be some trickery because it's a very bulbous section cast and blended and it's got room for the uh, the clinker breaker to revolve around inside it. So uh, five thousand hours and many, many years of experience in CAD and drawings uh, told me yeah, you guys, if you think I'm an old fella, yeah, no. You just uh, you just start early. It's the trick. Uh, so tell me that I'm going to come down, same, same trickaroo, lining up my reference to center again. I want to come down. Th I want to know where the, the center of that revolution is, and I'm going to base the outside profile on my drawing on where that center is. So I know it's three inches below the mating surface. So the mating surface is at four. Come down here to seven thereabouts. Put a mark. Now, I'm going to have to do this trickaroo again. And it's, uh, it requires some ninjutsu. So I probably have to do it off camera so you don't learn my secret technique. Um, but I'll, I'll pinch this guy with a pencil and set it centered. Set the dimension where I want it. And... Uh, and do a bulbous revolution there and uh, blend it by looks about like that and uh, get the measurements of the side pipe and some other things I'll throw them in here uh, and uh, you know I'll bring out the width of the mating surface the center of the measure the pipe bring it out here you know I'm, what I'm gonna do is make like a skeleton draw lines like center to center to center mating surface to center of the intersection to and once I get all the centers measured up, then I'll put in the width at the appropriate points, and then I'll connect the dots for this face, connect the dots for that face, connect the dots, connect the dots, blend the circle, and what I'll do is I'll have to, I'll sketch, say if the pipe goes out that way, I'll sketch the sides of the pipe from those dots that I drew, sketch the intersection, you know, from the corners down here. You'll see in a minute, it'll make a little bit more sense. It's going to be a little, little primitive, but it's going to be good enough. 
We need, we need the, the black box approach, the full volume this thing may or may not take up because it's so blended and curved, we don't want to try to make an exact perfect fit, we want to have clearance. Okay, I'll give this a shot at drawing this again live. The, the measurements were needlessly fortuitous. Uh, so whether uh, this was just pleasing to the eye or, or laziness, or maybe it actually maybe made this guy's job easier, or there's a practical reason I've not discovered, but our, uh, our exhaust valve there comes straight off and is centered right on the center of the clinker breaker shaft. So this, this round revolution area, which I have not drawn in yet, it happens to also be the center of our side shaft. Now, from that center of revolution to the end of that pipe, it's real close to eight and three quarters, but the end of the pipe has a kind of a, a bevel or, or a, it has a flange that steps in and then goes out to maybe to seal. If another tube were to go over it, it would seal in the inside. Maybe you put some mortar there when you bolt them together or some kind of sealant, you know, mud. Probably worked fine back in the day. It's not a, you're not heating it. You're blowing air through this part. Now it's heated by conduction indirectly. Um, so I'm going to say, again, rusty metal, possible sealant. Let's call it instead of eight and three quarters, nine inches to give us the maximum amount of uh, extra clearance. So where does that fall on our spectroscopier? Uh, well, I... I can't read it if you can read it, and if I can can read it, you can't. So, uh, so we'll just give it a go. One, two, three, four, five, uh, nine. The ninth notch. Figure that one out. Nine inches. Nine inches. And then I got the parallax error of uh, a quarter mile because I'm so far back here at the 45, and like I said, a pencil's width translates to a quarter inch, so uh, that's about a half inch of parallax error in real life. Um, so that's the center of my pipe. So center of the bottom, center of the pipe, bulbousy revolution deals, kind of looking, taking shape. Um, shoot, let me go get the diameter of these things. Herp -a -derp. Okay, I'm going to spit it out before I forget it. This guy, the bottom pipe diameter is about five inches. So, derp -a -derp -up -up -up, just eyeballing down to the two and a half or mark. And zero to two and a half to five. Do it a little better next time and get it on the, uh, the line, dummy. Um, now, our side pipe, the flange, the flange, the mounting flange to whatever sort of pipery going off the table is five inches. However, the pipe himself, he's, uh, my drawer's blocking my way here. The pipe himself, he's, uh, only, oh, uh, three and a half or so. It, it, this is kind of sketchy and fuzzy and I'm measuring the outside and it's a diameter and I'm holding the tape measure up and so there's double parallax errors in each direction. You gotta shift your head over here, over there. Are you still parallel? Are you still holding the tape in the same place? You know, is it in this hand? Is it in that end? Yeah. So, uh, like I said, flange is five inches. Now, eh, vertical references and all that. Doesn't matter. Good enough. Just, just get her done here. One, two and a half, three, four, five. About like that. And centering, like I said, three and a half inches. Half of that is one and a half plus a quarter. It's half a three plus half of a half. Three and a half makes it 1.75. So uh, approximator says 1.75 puts three and a half to be about there for zero and there for the three and a half um and you know i said our drop to our, our bulbous circle well uh, it was about four and somebody can't measure here i think i measured four off this line the blue one the page and not this guy but uh um turns out our our radius is about four 
So set one to zero and one into four. Again, radius is four. Setting this to the radius. Radius, Dave. Radius. Radius. I don't need any divide by two errors. The old Dave sometimes gets the binary rounding errors confused in his head. So, uh, um, hmm, which of these points is actually sharp? That one's more ouchy, so I'm going to point him in the center. trying not to get the parallax error on this guy. Now I'm, I'm holding the pencil to the side of it because I don't want him to wander in and out too badly. Uh, front, front ways or behind ways. There was a lot of cleanup on the other one you guys didn't see. I made it three or four different lines and then averaged them out. And Yeah, not the right tool for the job, but, you know... You, you do what you can and and hey this guy this guy will scribe you know this guy is actually a well he's he's a caliper so you, I mean you would have used him to just transfer measurements not to do this nonsense but so hypothetically or to do something more smarter it would look like this and Again, straight edge, approximator with the vertical, don't have a right angle to go off of, not on the straight edge, not on real life. So, uh, come up to this. See, that's a right angle. Close enough. Good enough for <clears throat> work. Don't tell the boss I said that. Yeah, so, I believe it. Again, outside perimeter maximum clearance, don't think too hard about it. Uh, and we gotta come off our three and a half inch mark for the pipe himself. Now remember there's blending and, and other stuff going on in this casting that we're not capturing right now. Um, and then I got flange. So, we said this guy was 10 inches tall, which I failed to notate any of these dimensions. Five. 3.5. I think this is just going to be jargon for the closest face is that length. The closest line segment is that length. Um, or whatever I done said that was. Uh, five. I think we said this was 10. So, yeah, and this is 4. All dimensions in uh, about that much. So, uh, yeah, so we already we can already see right here, okay, 14 inches, so my table, I remember this is bottom mounting surface, mounting surface, mounting surface, external, you know. So I already know bottom mounting surface is going to sit on top of my table. So this is the bottom of this is the tabletop. Tabletop is what I care about the height off the ground realistically. I mean this thickness of this is maybe a quarter inch or less. It's not going to make too much of a difference. Um, you know when I'm when I'm flinging welds and you know they're this wide and gobbed up you know quarter inch pretty good if i get that close so 14 inches well i want my tabletop at 30 inches so i think i can quite easily accommodate this guy dangling from the tabletop and some kind of bucket underneath if, if this was 15 inches i could put a 15 inch tall bucket so get some kind of tin tub metal steel galvanized don't don't smoke the galvanized but that ought to that ought to do it for uh getting a bucket under this guy um 
like I said before, we, we calculated it out. Uh, science did out on the other drawing that this, now, it's, now this is all to scale in theory. We scienced it out on the other drawing that this guy wouldn't stick out past the table. Look at that. I line this up. Edge of the table, edge of the table, edge of the table, boom. Now I bet you I could almost measure that. And it would, should, if we're, if we're any good at this, when we're not, uh, should me measure up to about what we said on the other side of the page. So I would say that's about two, two, between two and three, two and a half inches. And our garbled de gook, uh, did we write it down? No, we didn't write down the measurement, so I lied. Do that all the time. You ain't caught me yet. Um, yeah, so I'm not, I don't need to, you know, uh, the vice, the height of the vice off vertical, you know, it, it, it might benefit me to make the table slightly low. I got to think about that for a minute. You know, my, my working in the, the fire is going to be downwards into this. However, I've got to enter that from above. So maybe having this low gives me a better angle to work at and also gets the vice lower. Uh, the vice lower means keep my hands low, clamp low, because it's going to sit above the table, rob low. Um, and it's got a bit of a tiny anvil on it. So if I actually wanted a whale on it, that would be lower too. So... Yeah, maybe, you know, I'll, I'll think instead of 30 inches, I'll go look and say, let's make it 28. Maybe let's make it 26. Um, so I'm going to go see what the uh, the professional armchair blacksmiths have to say about it on the internets. And uh, get back to you.